Well guys, we're now up here. We're going to do a wheel bearing, re-greasing the wheel bearings on it and readjusting them. Uh, I found out where some of my slack was coming from. I can take this spindle right here and I can turn this spindle this much and the, and the arms up here and the tie rods and all don't move. It's moving right here inside the spindle there. So what it is, there's a bolt right here, and if my memory serves me correct, this bolt has got a long point on the end of it, I remember from a kid, and it goes up in a hole in this shaft here, and probably one of two things has happened. Either the bolt's just loose, which I can turn it with my hands, it is loose, or the end has, that long pointed part has broke off of the bolt, or the hole is watered out in it. So probably what I'm going to do first off is I'm going to tighten this bolt down and just see if it makes a difference with this wobbling part right here and gets rid of this part of the wheel wobble. So we got a crescent right here. We're gonna take a crescent here and we go, oh yeah, it's loose. Now it could be stripped, now I don't know. Now it's getting tight. It's getting pretty tight. All right, that's tightened down. Let's see, did that make a difference in this? Yeah. Some. That, that all the slack we got now is right here, which is normal. A little bit of slack in that is normal. So that took care of that part. Next thing is this right here. We've got wheel bearing slack here. Now, I can move this thing around. I can move it in and out. I can move it up and down. Now it spins free, so we know the bearing's not tore up. So the next thing is going to be uh, let me stop before I go any further. I didn't show taking the wheel off. It took me an hour to get this wheel off of here because the, the wheel itself was rusted to the spindle out here. All this here, that wheel was rusted to this and the bolts, I've had to reorder the bolts. This tractor has a special bolt in it. It has a tapered shank right here that tapers down that fits into a tapered part of the wheel. And the head of these bolts were so old and so rusted up that uh, there's supposed to be a 5 8 inch head on it. Well, I ended up having to take a 15 millimeter six point socket and take a hammer and drive it up on it because it was so rusted up to break these bolts loose and get them out of there. So now I have had to order all new bolts so we're going to be waiting on them to come in. But in the meantime, I went and picked up some grade 8 bolts. Uh, a couple of them to go on each wheel so we can move the tractor around. Not use it, but just if we have to roll it a little bit, we can roll it. And not have to worry about it just sitting up on jacks. At least it'll be back on the wheel. till these new bolts come in. Now that was the reason I didn't show taking the wheel off. Because it took about an hour to get that thing off of there. Now, what we're going to have to do here is that all the older ones had a cup on it here. Now this cup is threaded into this spindle. Now I don't know, sometimes you can turn them by hand. Yeah. You don't ever want to tighten these down real tight. Now I don't know what we're going to see. when we. I mean, I know what it's supposed to look like, but you guys got to realize this is a 1950 model, and there is no telling what somebody's done. It's got grease in it, because I can tell by the way it's turning. Yeah, you see this old grease? It's packed, but this grease is hard. It's no longer pliable. So what we've got to do is we've got to dig all this grease out of this cup here and clean this. And in the end of this right here, I know you can't see it right now, but there's a cotter key in here through a castle nut. And we've got to clean all that grease off of this and get to the cotter pin get the cotter pin out and unscrew the castle nut off of it so that we can get the bearing out and the spindle out and we can begin to wash and clean this stuff up. Okay guys, we're gonna start digging some of this old, this is old, just old hard grease. I'm gonna try to get some of it out right here. Now this nut will probably never be real tight. As a matter of fact, you can see it moving while I'm, while I'm doing that. So what I'm gonna do is right here is the end of the uh, cotter pin and we're gonna get a pair of pliers here well, I 
I say we are, I guess I'll put them up. All right, we're going to see if we can take these needle noses here and get the end of this cotter pin straightened up enough that we can slide it out of there. It's kind of hard because all that grease, you can't really see anything. It's going to come out. Well, it'll make it to a certain point. They always do. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's just the thing about it. A lot of times you can take your screwdriver and stick it into the slot in the end of the uh, I don't know, and take a wrench or something and just kind of bump that. But when it comes out now, a lot of times it'll shoot way out you on it, so you have to be kind of careful. One of the little tricks of the trade. All right, we're going to lay that over to the side there now. That's got to be cleaned. Now... You going if you don't want to get grease on your hands, you can put a you know you put a glove on or something, but this shouldn't be tight. Okay, there we go. Yeah. I feel a little bit of grit on that, so that tells me that I definitely gotta wash this and clean it up. And what I'll do to wash it and clean it up, some people uh take and put kerosene or diesel fuel in something. I'll probably just take a little gasoline and put it in something and slosh all that stuff around. Now to get this barren out of here, get that hard grease off of it right there. It's uh, not hard to do. A lot of times you can just bump this thing lightly like that. You want to be easy with it because there's a uh, should be a felt seal in the back. We should have a uh, washer here behind that. And then we can slide this thing real easy. This should come off of here. And this is our bearings right here. Now we're going to, and they look, they're not blue or like they've been got hot or anything. We're going to take them and put them in some gas and we're going to wash and clean all the grease out of them. And then this should just slide right off. And the bearing came with it, which doesn't usually happen. But what you have, you have a, a rubber and a felt seal here. You want to be very careful not to damage this because if you do, then that just means you got to replace it. So let me see if this bearing. There we go. Now, one thing you want to do, you want to remember the inner and the outer. The inner bearing is always larger than the outer bearing. So we're going to wash both of these up, clean them up real good. I'm not going to show doing that because I don't think that's important to watch, but we're going to come back and we're going to wash this and clean this up, just making sure we don't damage this seal right here because that actually fits right up inside this right here. It runs inside this part right here. Now, we may clean this up a little bit where it's nice and clean. And we see all this down in here? Guys, this is just old grease that's just packed in there and it's hard. And it's really not serving any purpose. We need some new. Uh, we have some grease uh, that we're going to be using in this. That is uh, a very high temperature grease that's made for bearings and stuff like that. So that um, it doesn't let allow the bearings. If the bearings get hot or something, the grease won't just run out and get too liquidy. It's got a real heavy viscosity to it. Uh, and it should save our bearings in the future by putting this new grease in here. So it's going to take me a while to, to go and dig all this out and clean all this up. But guys, we'll be back in a, in a YouTube second. Okay, guys. <laughs> Never know what you're going to get into. I, uh, I stuck the bearings down into the gasoline to start washing them off. Well, this is what I came up with out of it here at... Uh, as soon as the gas washed all the grease off of it, it just fell apart in my hands and fell down into the gas there. So uh, the the uh, inner wheel bearing was wore out. Uh, it just fell apart in my hands. And uh, when I got this one cleaned up, I got to looking on the back side. Somebody has took a hammer and a screwdriver or something and has drove into the uh, carriage on that one. And it uh, has a rough spot in it there. So uh, we're going to have to replace both bearings. And when you do that, you just as well replace the races and all to go with them because they're, if you're going to put new bearings, we're going to go through it. We're going to put everything in it new, all new felt, 
seals we're gonna put everything in it back new and uh, both front wheels on it now I'm going to be showing only this one side but uh, which means now the tractor's just got to sit there with no front wheel or hub or anything on it until I can get a new set of bearings in here uh, that's where a lot of the slack was coming from was the simple fact that the inner bearing was actually wore out and the only thing that was holding it together was just the grease and when you wash the grease out of it, it fell apart so I guess we'll wait till we get the bearings and we'll put it back together then. All right, guys, we have the uh, hub off of the front of the uh, farm all now. Uh, we've got it kind of cleaned up. I'm going to be showing you how to take the races out of the hub. Uh, it specifically has some places in it made to be able to take them out. So I want to take the opportunity now and show you that. We're going to turn a light on here. There's a groove right here in this side right here. And if we can move over, there's a groove in the other side right there. You're going to want to take a long punch like this and use to put against the end of the race in there. It's made to do from both sides, so we're going to take them out one at a time. You're going to want to open your vise up. You're going to want to sit this thing down on the vise where you've got a good flat surface to work with. Okay, we have the punch against the race, and you're going to want to tap it. And it's made to move from side to side. Let's keep moving back and forth. You don't want to get it jammed in there crooked, because then it makes it really hard to come out. You want to take it out evenly. That's fixing to fall out. All right, there's one of them out. Okay, here's the race that we knocked out of here. Uh, we were driving against this side right here uh, to drive it out, but this is what it looks like. This is what the baron sits down inside. Now we're going to take the one out from the other side of the spindle. And to do that, we're just literally going to take it and flip it over in the vise. And we're going to drive with, uh, the punch on this side. Doesn't take a big hammer to do this. You can do this with just a small, a little small hammer. Okay, it's fixing to fall out. There we go. Move the hammer down out of the way. Get the little bit of grease off the end of our punch. Lift this up. Here's the race. Wipe it off, get some of this grease off of it. Are you reusing those? No, these are not reusable. I'm just, the only reason I'm cleaning it is just to show you. I mean, this is it right here. There's a big one and there's a little one. This is the inside one. This is the outside one. Now that we have that done, we're going to take our bearing kit out that came. It's a complete kit. It has both bearings and races in it. A bearing and a race come matched. They're a matched set. And you want to make sure you don't get any trash in the bearing. So what we're going to do is we're going to drop this out of here. Got a little bit of grease on it, makes it a little bit tacky. And we're going to put the bearing right back in the plastic so it doesn't get any trash in it. This is the new race right here. We're going to put the small one in first. Now you make sure you put it in in the right direction. You want the cone facing outward uh, towards you. The flat part here goes down in the hole first. Now what I have found to be the best thing to do is to find a socket that's the right size of that race. And I have one here. And we're going to lay it right on top of it. 
and we're going to lightly tap it till we drive it in solid. You'll know when you get it down in there solid, you'll hear a solid sound. Okay. And we get that done. You can tell there's the new race installed in this end and we're going to flip it over and we're going to get the large one out now. Okay, now we're going to do exactly the same thing. The cone shape goes toward the outside. The flat part goes down in toward the inside. Now this one goes kind of far down in there. So what we've done is we've located a socket that's the same size. It just fits in that hole right there. We're going to do exactly the same thing. We're going to tap lightly because that's the reason we use a small hammer. You don't want to get it started crooked. Light taps is all you need. Once again, you'll notice that solid sound. You'll know you're all the way in. And that is what it looks like to have it drove all the way in there. Now with this, there is a wear ring that goes in there. Next, this is what the seals of the tractor run inside to make sure that no dust gets up in here to these bearings. Now you don't have to worry, the bearing will slide through this. So what we're gonna do is put this up here. Now this is a really tricky part right here. You don't wanna just take a hammer and come up here and just start trying it because it's not gonna work. It, it's just not going to work. This thing is made to go down in there very tightly. So what I'll do is I'll take a one by, It wants to start crooked every time. Once you get it started, it'll go ahead and go. But you want a soft piece of wood like this so you don't mess the edge of the seal up. Once you get it down there, you can take your hammer and lightly tap it just to make sure you don't want to you don't want to mess the edge up on it no way. And that puts our wire ring in there. It's a good smooth fit all the way around this right here. It's down in there all the way, guys. Now all we got to do is take this thing up there and get it painted, and get it cleaned up, and we're ready to install it on the tractor. Guys, we've got the front wheel off of here. Um, we've taken the bearings out and all this type of stuff and we're going to be replacing everything back brand new. Now, I, I, I drove the seal off. I had a lot of trouble getting it off of here and I've looked at this. This has never, probably never ever been off of here since it was a, a new tractor. And this is all kind of in rough shape. So I'm going to take some emery cloth like you use on a crankshaft on a motor. And I'm going to just like... I'm gonna just like lightly touch it up. Yeah, I see this rust all over it. So we're gonna be touching this up, seeing if we can. not You don't want to take too much because you don't want to, uh, you know, you don't want your seal slipping and all that on there. But I just want to brighten it up a little bit, and plus up where the felt washer goes. There's a felt washer that goes on first. I feel the raw or rusted pitted areas. I gotta try to get it up. I want it to fit really nice. I don't want to. I don't want to take it down to where it's like perfectly shiny because I'm afraid I'll take too much metal off of it. But I do want to get it where it's not as rusted as it was. 
Now we've got that. Now right, right up on there's another little lip up there that a felt ring goes on and it was rusted really bad. So I want to try to touch that up just a little bit and I might just, what I'm going to do is fold this emery cloth where it's a little stiffer. Kind of clean that up just a little bit. It ain't got to be perfect but because the felt, I don't want none of that spinning. And... and mainly trying to get any rust or dirt or anything off there. And I think, I think we're about there. Yeah, I think that's going to be pretty good. And then our regular wheel bearing goes on this section right here. And I want to make sure that it's kind of cleaned up real good. You don't want to take too much off of that either. Okay, I think that one, that's pretty good right there. I don't want to feel no rough places in it. All right, this is our felt seal here. We're going to take it, and it's going to go on there first. It fits real tight up against that. Then we have, these are called, uh, we got this in, it's a, it's a new, it's called a new and improved. The old one had uh, leather, uh, around this part right here. This is a new, it called it a new improved rubber type seal. Now, it didn't really send any instructions as to the way it goes on here. I'm going to guess that, that the lip goes out so that when I shove the hub on there, it squeezes it down tight. This is maybe a little bit of a challenge to get this on here because I don't want to damage it. So what I'm probably going to do is take the old one right here, which was in pretty bad shape it just broke all the pieces all the stuff when I took it off of it but I'm gonna see because I don't want to hammer against that seal itself I'm gonna see if I can I see the felt some bounce back off of it we'll get that in just a minute kind of be easy with this I guess if you had a real deep well socket, you could probably use that. But I don't have one that large. And you don't wanna, you just don't wanna bend it. That's the whole issue. I'm trying to keep from mashing my finger too. thinking we're the felt is pretty no it ain't quite I see space well the space is for the rubber to to go down in once it's okay I think I'm there let's see yeah that's good and tight that's good and tight there now Okay, this is our new wheel bearing now here. And this is the hub. I've already installed the new races inside the hub here. And the new, uh, it's called, this is called a wear ring. That rubber part on and the felt part of that right there goes inside the wear ring right here to kind of create a seal so that the dust doesn't go in it. And then this is the bearing. We're gonna be packing it with grease and it will go down inside here and it will set in here like that. And this whole assembly, will take the nut off and this whole assembly will go up on here like this. Now I'll go ahead and pack this with grease and install the, uh, the bearing up on here first actually. All right, we're back here now. We've got our grease. Now this is a red lithium complex grease. This here is extreme performance, high temperature grease. I like this because bearings hardly ever wear out 
when you're using this type of grease. It has a very extremely high viscosity and it is, I mean, it doesn't get watery when it gets hot and all that kind of stuff. It's very tacky. It sticks really well. Now, I was able to get this grease from a company because the cartridges had been broken and stuff. I got them at a real good discount. So we're going to use this grease to um, actually pack the bearing first. And they make a tool that you can get to, to go on this bearing to actually take a grease gun and pack it full of grease. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to actually get pretty nasty today um, and just do it the old-fashioned way. If you have rubber gloves, you could probably use rubber gloves to do this. And it would probably... See how it's almost like syrup. It's stringy, real stringy. All right. I can lay that there where maybe it won't roll off. Well, that stuff is some kind of tacky. That's what I like. You can take this, you can take them, and I like to take mine and, and take the back of the bearing and, and work it in from the back first. And I know there is, there is a, a procedure to do this. I'm very much aware of that. I went to school to be a mechanic. Uh, so I'm very much aware of the procedures. You're going to see how stringy and the viscosity of this stuff and how it it is probably the best you'll ever get for doing this. I like to do one side of the bearing and then I'll turn it completely over. And I'm going to do the other side also. And to be honest with you, I really would advise if you have gloves to use rubber gloves on this. Because it is, it is very messy. I'll assure you that once you get it on it, it ain't coming off. All right. <laughs> Look at that. There's that. Boy, now, get my hand's a little bit cleaned up here. Still got this on that hand. You don't have to worry about it falling off. It's not going to fall off. Sounds like a horror movie, but... <laughs> that it does, but it was just the door shutting. Ugh. Now, the inside of this, I'm going to take this other grease and I'm going to put it inside there. There's a hole in there. We're going to fill it up as good as we can. All right. Now, this kind of stuff is sticky, guys. That's what I'm telling you. If you're looking for a grease that works with barons, this is the grease. Lay that right there out of the way. I'm going to turn this over now. Maybe, I don't know if you can get where you can see down in there or not. But you can see... We've got some grease in there, and I'm going to probably try to put a little bit more down in there. I'm going to try to get as much as I can in it. So we can actually fill that full in there. Because we want to make sure we don't have any problems. My daddy used to tell me, you can't over-grease nothing. All right. Get some of this off of me here. Let's sit this up. I should have put a rubber. Dang 
You don't want it in the top or what? I don't want it on this right here. All right, guys, it's time to get this bearing on there. Make sure we get a good straight start with it. Now, that up there out of the way. Boy, talk about nasty. All right, guys, we got it slipped up on there. We're going to see if we can just take a screwdriver. Now, be very careful and don't get against the outer part of the race. And if you tap it real lightly, it should, with the grease we have on it, it should just slide right up on there. Like that. That's the way it should work. All right, now, we're going to clean our tool back off there. Let's take our hub assembly here. We're going to ease this up on here. All right, that's the way it's supposed to go. And now we have an, uh, uh, an outer bearing here, a brand new one. We're going to basically do it the same way we've done the other one. We're just going to take and get some grease on our fingers with this one. We're just going to try to pack it. You want to push it down in there really good and keep working it. And guys, this grease is a little different than other grease. The viscosity of this grease is so high. I'm telling you, barons just about never wear out with this. Matter of fact, some companies won't even let you use it on their bearings because they don't ever wear out. Okay, we got the back side. Let's see, we can't get a little bit forced in this front side. Bearings, you can tell they're thick. I'm gonna rub it around on the outside of them a little bit. Boy, them things that is thick, thick. All right, we're gonna take it. We're going to ease it up on there now. I'm going to pick this hub up just a little bit and it should slide right up on there nice and tight, just like that. All right, now it's time to put our washer and our castle nut on here now. These are brand new bearings. There's some rules that go with new bearings versus old bearings. If you're just replacing seals and you're keeping your old bearing, um, you don't want to over tighten it. With a new one, you want it to where it's just nice and see, that grease is so thick, it doesn't spin freely. But I want to make sure Everything's new, it's tight. And this nut, this the, the shaft that's sticking out here, the spindle, that has a cotter key hole in it. Now we've got to locate that cotter key hole and we're gonna tighten this castle nut to the point where it lines up with that, but not over tight. If we are a little bit off, we will always back up a little bit rather than go tighter with it. All right, guys, we have our hole in our spindle right there. There's a hole in that. So we've got our uh, cotter key assortment here. See if we can find one that uh, actually matches here. It's going to probably be this size over here. Get some of these old ones out of the way here. It's going to be one of these here. These are universal, so what we're going to do is I'm going to measure the distance of it. 
and then we're going to cut it off. Let's see, it's going to need to probably need to be a little bit longer than that right there. So we're going to cut it probably right in here. All right. And then what I like to do once I cut it, if I can get it to separate. Break out the old trusty pocket knife. separate them and we're going to come in here and we'll cut one of them just a little bit shorter than the other one well I said I was that's a that's a little easier said than done there we go Now, there we go. Now, we're going to take this. Get the light up here where we can see. We're going to stick this. Get it to go in a hole there. drive it in there like that. I'll take this off and see this is still free to spin. It's not no in and out play on it or anything and that's fine with a uh, with a new one. Now if it's an old one you want to leave a little bit of slack in it and we want to take this. The reason I cut that off is so I could grab this one with the needle nose pliers and I can bend it back around like that and take the, uh, the hammer and kind of kind of tap it. And then we can take the screwdriver on the other one. Be real easy. And we want to bend it back. Now that we have that, this here is our cap that actually goes over the end of this here and it screws into it. What I like to do is to be able to put a little bit of grease uh, in this so that we have some extra grease in it. Now we're going to move them out of the way. Might get a little bit of grease up here. I just like to put a little extra in the cap. Now this doesn't have to be packed completely full and, or anything like that. I just like to put a little extra in there as insurance. All right. This should start very easy. It should screw right in there like that. for tighten it. Guys, basically, that's all there is to, to doing this. Now, we're going to come back and clean the grease off of all this and get it all nice and cleaned up. We're going to install our wheel and our wheel weight back on it. All right, guys, we've got this ready now. We're going to see if we can... Now, we had to drive this thing off of here with a sledgehammer. I'm just hoping I can get it to... back on there that's gonna be the thing these are such a tight fit why don't we try this here see if we can do this we ordered brand new uh, lug bolts for it the ones that was on here was so rusted up till I like to have never got them off of here are you putting no rusted ones on there nope these are brand new just took them out of pack 
Well, they look rusty. No, they're just black, ready to be painted. Huh. Get them all started before we actually begin to tighten anything down. They're actually the, the same size as a spark plug wrench. So I got, that's what I got on here. I'm just not gonna be tightening them with this. I'm just using this to temporarily run them down. sure that thing is going up on there. Tighten them all down a little at a time. And we'll retighten these once we set the weight of the tractor down on the floor. Where we... Okay. Now, we're going to be installing the wheel weight that goes on there. Now, the wheel weight weighs about 30 pounds. It's, it's kind of heavy. Not anything like the back one. The back one's 150 pounds. But this one is kind of heavy. So what I'm going to do, we bought brand new bolts for that also. I figure why put it all back together if you're not going to put brand new in everything. I'm going to install one from the back and I'm going to put it up at the top so that when I pick this up, lock in like it's supposed to. Just getting nothing started here. What we'll do is go ahead and put a nut and washer on that. Now these are lock washers and nuts so that way we'll have to worry about it falling back out. Let's see if we can run these down a little bit. Kind of snug them just a little bit. I don't want to tighten them all the way yet. We make sure we got them all in there.
like I said, we'll be coming back and retightening everything once we let it down on the floor. All right. Get back off there. Now. Yeah. That's nice, and we want to be able to grab it. You don't want any play in it. With a new bearing, it's okay if you have just a touch. When I move this, I can barely feel a little tiny little tick in it just a little bit, which is perfectly fine for a new bearing. If it was an old bearing, you'd want just a little bit more slack than what I've got here, but this is just a very tiny little tick. And what we're gonna do is, once I get these tightened, we're gonna go back and I'm gonna run it for a while, probably a few days, and then we'll come back and we're gonna take this cap back off right here. And we're gonna see if the bearings need any more adjustment, because sometimes when you seat them a little bit, uh, they tend to get a little bit loose and we'll come back at that point and tighten them back down. But guys, other than that, this will complete. Now I'm gonna come back and paint, you know, where I put these new bolts in here after I tighten it all down, we're gonna repaint it. And always, when you put new lug bolts in a tractor and take the wheels off of it, every time you run that tractor, when you shut it down, get off and check those bolts to make sure they have not come loose because when anytime you take a wheel off and put it back on, for about the first five times you use it, it's a good idea to recheck your lug bolts and these uh, weight bolts here to make sure that they retighten. It's a whole lot easier to do that than it is to have the lug bolts wear and come loose and mess the threads up on them or have your wheel fall off in the field or something like that or lose your bolts in the field. Um, it's a lot easier just to come back and retighten it and make sure. So guys, I hope this has been a little bit educational as far as installing the front wheel bearings on a 1950 Cub Formal. And um, I'm pretty sure this procedure will be pretty much the same on most of the Formals. So, thank you for watching. Thank you from Deep South Homestead.